Good afternoon, I'm Richard Kerslake and I'm here at Texas Instruments' Kilby Labs and I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking to you about the Internet of Things. Maybe a good place to start is actually by defining what we think it is and how we think it's going to evolve. So the first thing is we start with a thing. It could be an industrial pump, or it could be maybe a health monitor, or it could be something in your home. Now, moving forward, the first step we believe is those become connected. And the classic example of that is technologies like Bluetooth Low Energy that let the device talk to a smartphone. It may not actually be talking to the internet itself directly. The next phase is kind of almost things on the internet, where it could be like a thermostat, where the thermostat is talking to the cloud and it's talking to your smartphone so you can control the temperature in your office or your home remotely. And then the last step, which is what we call the true internet of things, is when you have nodes talking to nodes, and that's where the bulk of the traffic is. And that's where people are saying we could see up to 50 billion units by the year 2020. So an exciting market, but the question is, what needs to happen for that to, to be a success and really become a reality? Well, the first thing at the heart of any IoT solution is connectivity. Now that can be wired or it can be wireless and there are many ways to attack that problem. Today, in fact, TI offers over a dozen different wired and wireless technologies. So that's something I think we've got fairly well addressed. The next issue is power. Almost without doubt, a large number of these devices are going to be battery powered. So the question is, how do you actually get them to run not just a year, which is technically possible today from a battery, but multiple years? Well, one of the ways you could do that is things like energy harvesting, where you take the energy potentially from a solar cell, you boost it up to charge the battery, and then bring it down to actually run the device. And the question is, how can you do that really efficiently? And we have technologies today that we're developing that can run off hundreds of nanoamps that do that power conversion extremely efficiently. So we can see battery life maybe going from one year to five years. Well, what else needs to happen? Well, in addition to power, Clearly security is key. With 50 billion nodes, there's going to be a high risk that people will try and attack these with malicious reasons. And so the question is, how do we actually secure them? And there's lots of things we can do there. But I'd like to move on to one last point. For this to be successful, there are going to be thousands of new applications with hundreds of customers. So it has to be easy to use. Not all of those customers are going to be expert. Now I'd like to take one specific example of how we bring all that together. How do we talk about power, ease of use, and security? Well, let's take Wi-Fi as an example. It's a very popular technology today in phones and in PCs and in tablets. And it's very attractive, it's very fast, and it's broadly available in people's homes and in the enterprise. The big challenge is really one, that it's perceived as being very high power and not suitable for battery applications. And the second one is it's complicated. Today, the stacks involved with it usually run on a big host processor. So when you try and use it in an IoT application, it's seen as much too heavy, much too complicated. Now let's think about how you could solve all of those. Well, number one, if you look at how power is burnt in a radio, clearly when it's actually powered on and transmitting and receiving, that's when it's using power. When it's encrypting information, that's using power. If we do the encryption actually in hardware instead of software, we can get onto the network, very quickly send the information, get off of the network, and turn the radio off. So we can focus our energies not on making Wi-Fi go fast, but making Wi-Fi really, truly low power. And then the second one is ease of use. As I said today, most of the stacks actually run on a host processor, unsuitable for IoT. Imagine now we actually embed those in the device. So now the device is truly standalone. You can connect it to even the simplest 8 or 16-bit micro, and it knows how to talk Wi-Fi. That's where we want to take our Wi-Fi technology for the IoT of the future. One thing's for sure about IoT is it's going to evolve very rapidly with, as, as I said, thousands of applications. So flexibility is going to be key. And luckily, TI has one of the very largest portfolios of analog and connectivity and processors in the market, giving our customers the flexibility they need to build their solutions. Thank you.